I can see perfectly. Unless you've been living under many rocks for many years, you will be aware that LEGO have been making limited edition collectible minifigure blind bag things where you can collect all 16 and then wonder why you've got no money left. Um, I've actually collected every single one they've ever done. Seriously, look. And this is because a local department store near me actually checks by feeling the bags as to what figures in it before they sell it to you, thus making it actually affordable to buy them all. Uh, they've produced like 11 series of random characters so far, they had one partial series based on the Olympics, they had a series based on the Lego Movie, and now it's... The Simpsons... Yes, finally the Springfield residents have got the Lego treatment and have been spewed out into these little bags in order to remove money from your pockets and give it to the Lego Corporation. Let's not beat around the bush here. And what are they like? Well, I can show you the whole flipping lot right now. First up is, of course, patriarch and focus of the show, Homer Simpson. Well, I think actually the focus was Bart in the very early days, but it quickly moved on to Homer, and here he is in all his blocky glory. Now, some people have been a bit disappointed that they've got specially sculpted heads, and they're not using the standard generic Lego sort of rotund little head thing, and just had a face painted on it. And I can see where they're coming from, because, you know, these do look less like Lego figures and more like, well, Lego figures with a big hat on them. But I understand why they've done it, because if they had gone that route, I don't think they would actually look much like the characters at all, and, you know... This way, we get some quality sculpting, and at least things look a bit different. Accessory-wise, he comes with a... Well, I presume that's a remote control, as opposed to a really crap calculator. And a donut. A purple one, of course, because that's the healthiest. Now, the head sculpts... Well, if you're aware of uh, previous figures they've done of The Simpsons, some of the characters work better than others in 3D. Homer here... Quite good. Looks nice from the side and the back. Front, he looks a bit kind of evil. I don't know, he has a malicious intent in his eyes, which freaks me out slightly. But other than that, it's good stuff, and they've matched all the colours nicely they have, and all the figures, actually. Off you go, Homer. We like you. Let's see number two, which is, of course, Bart. Bartholomew J. Simpson. The J standing for DRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
I don't know, full of existential angst. Actually, probably should be. Lisa's haircut never translates well to 3D. It looks like some mathematical model that's sitting in a university. But such is life. She's got tiny little legs like Bart. The Yoda legs, as we call them. And, yeah, other than that, it's all good. You know what the character is. That works for us. And, oh my goodness, it's Maggie. Looking very worried and up to the side. Maximum points for this excellent Bobo Bear prop. With astonishing attention to detail there. Bobo. Not Rosebud. Go on, get in there. There we are. Now, there is a slightly odd thing on Maggie. Basically, she's not really in scale with the other characters. Giant's terror baby with man arms. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose they couldn't really have made a tiny one, could they? But, I don't know. It, it seems slightly freakish, and Homer should probably kill her off with a bit of wood before she grows up into some kind of monster. On a lighter note, it's Grandpa! There he is. Without an onion on his belt, as it's obviously not the style of the time. And, prop-wise, old man yells at Cloud Newspaper. Excellent. That is the one I would want with him. Actually, all the props all reference things from early episodes, presumably because nobody likes the later ones. Yeah, he's got his pink shirt and his bolo tie, and really, really good um, sculpting on the head. The wrinkles are fantastic. Look at that. Even the back of the head, look. This, I would have said, is a really, really good likeness of the character way above the others we have seen so far. In fact, Grandpa, you get to go over here, where I'm going to put the ones I like the best and pick my favourite later. <laughs> hey, look, it's Flanderus with his I Love South Paws mug and property of Ned Flanders toolbox, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, actually, because surely the joke is that should be given away with Homer? Mm. Ah, maybe you have to give it to him yourself and create your own jokes. You know, this is about Lego and being constructive. He's got his green jumper. He's got his, frankly, quite frightening goggly dead eyes. Looks good from the side. From the front, looks a bit scary. But uh, good likeness. The moustache and the hair helped to that, I think. Never realised his hair was quite so high. But it is. I checked. And he can now go off and be a weird sort of caricature of the Bible Belt in America, as I think he is wont to do. I'd quite like his freakish, scary children. You're still in shot, Ned. Now everything's better. Well, that wasn't a bad one. They're getting better. And here's Krusty the Clown, everyone's favourite celebrity endorser of things. And of course, his famous catchphrase, the flesh sings. And oh look, he's got himself a pie which I think actually came with another figure once, so they've just reused it, which is fair enough. I would have liked to have seen some dodgy, crusty merchandise with him, but that's just me. The hair is beautifully done. Look at that. You could not ask for better clown hair on a minifigure, and that's not a phrase I expected to use today. He's got a big grin going on there, which kind of does... Yeah, I think the teeth do help these sculpts, but the eyes with the grin... A little bit frightening. Let's put him in the back. Ah, there we are. He looks slightly less scary now. Go off and eat that pie, mate. Don't throw it at people. It's not funny and it's rude. Next up, we're getting into the slightly obscure leagues now with a tiny little mill house. And Biclops magazine. He's got two eyes. Good for him. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about this one. It's kind of the worst likeness yet, I would have said. There's something... I don't know, just something doesn't feel right about it. I don't know, again, if it's the sculpting, or just the fact it's a character that's really hard to capture in 3D. But, um, I mean, he's got his cowlick and his giant eyebrows and his eyes that are far, far too apart from each other. You know, all the features of the character along with the big nose. But, yeah, it doesn't quite come together to scream Millhouse to me. Millhouse, incidentally, being a reference to the middle name of Richard Nixon, the old American president. I didn't know that until recently, but then I did, and then I reported it to you. And, oh, look, it's Ralph, everyone's favourite retarded policeman's child. I choo-choo choose you from the most depressing episode ever. You can indeed spot the exact moment his heart breaks. Um... Yeah, the, again, the sculpts are getting... Mm, he looks too kind of... I mean, they've gone for the vacant eyes, which is fair enough, but he looks somehow too wide. He looks a bit guntery of all the other characters, and from the top, it just looks like there's a giant spider monster coming out of his scalp. Um, I don't know. I'm getting less of a Ralph Wiggum vibe and more of a Toad from the X-Men vibe. Yeah, I don't know. 
go over there and stop bothering me, because it's a poo, one of my favourites. Here he is, with a squishy, of course, which is apparently just a slush puppy or something, I've never quite got my head around that. He's got his chest hair, he's got his giant bouffant hair, his tiny little moustache, and yeah, I like this one. Again, the face is strangely without any sort of expression, which is a common feature, but it looks really like him. You can't uh, argue against that. And overall, it's one of my favourites so far. The best thing is, you can do this, and it looks like he's got a terrifying, freakish neck, which keeps me amused for hours. Yep, good stuff. Thank you. Do come again. And next up, Nelson, one of the big hitters. No, he's not actually, he's just got a stick. Why has he got a baseball bat? That seems like an odd um, thing to give him. You don't really want to be giving the potential violent bully a baseball bat anyway, do you? But it is a nicely sculpted baseball bat, and I'm going to say the word baseball bat one more time. Baseball bat. Um, this is a fantastic sculpt. I don't know if it's because of the teeth bared, or just, you know, it translates well to 3D or something, but that is absolutely amazing. He's got his semi-mullet thing going on, and he looks exactly right from every angle. All together now, let's do his catchphrase. They're all dead! Oh, The Simpsons. It always makes me chuckle. Um, yeah, absolute favourite. You can go over there next to Grandpa and fight it out later, and probably win, because he's got a newspaper and you've got a stick with a good handle on it. Now, for some reason, we now get into Ichi, the uh, violent comic mouse from The Simpsons universe. And that's an odd one, because they have kind of haven't done characters like Barney and stuff, but we have gone into animated stuff that isn't real in the show. They're also massively out of scale. Um, there was one where they came to life and came out of the television set, and they was indeed mouse-sized. And here he's the same size as Lisa. But who cares? He's fictional even within The Simpsons. Comes with a big club, which they gave away with caveman figures earlier. And, yeah, I really like this, actually. I think the face uh, works very nicely in 3D, even though it's so massively exaggerated. It, oh, this is interesting. All the other characters' heads are hard plastic. This one's rubber. And yet, still looks shiny, and still has really perfect paint applications. Hey, quality control, lads. Now, I really like that. Uh, it's got such a beautiful uh, resemblance. It's uncanny. You go and stand over there and kill Mickey Mouse later. I know you've always wanted to. And you can't have Itchy without Scratchy. Oh, quite a nice tail part there. It's just occurred to me, Itchy doesn't have a tail. I don't think he ever did, did he, in the programme, huh? Oh, I never realised that. But Scratchy does, and he's got this rather beautifully painted fireman's axe in order to have violent fights. And the face, if anything, is even better than Itchy there, I would have said. Um, he's got his gormless tongue hanging out. I've just realised Itchy can make realistic mouse noises. Hooray for rubber on plastic. Yeah, rubber head again, uh, and really, really good. Maybe it's because he's got a bit of expression in the eyes. I think that helps to an extent. But, oh ho ho, yes, I have just realised something, actually. We'll come back to that. But yeah, really love this one. I think you, I can't imagine how they could do that better, really. It is pretty damn precise. You go over there. Meanwhile... Clancy Wiggum has appeared with his slightly repainted standard megaphone and this grey dildo. Yep, he's got his full uh, things going on, some little shoulder patches. Presumably they're some sort of badge that hasn't come out, epaulettes of some type. No idea. But the face is kind of... I don't know, odd. For starters, it doesn't seem particularly head-shaped. It looks like some sort of slug monster sitting on his neck. And he suffers a bit from what his son's got, where he's got this sort of slightly over-bloated look, where he ends up looking... I don't know, somehow, well, human is an odd description for Simpsons characters at the best of times, but, yeah, I don't know, not quite working for me. A little bit of the Toad from the X-Men vibe again. Hat is nicely done, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious who it is, and it's not bad, but, yeah, mm -hmm. go over there with your son and beat him mercilessly until he gains some intelligence. And finally, number 16, is Charles Montgomery Burns himself. Excellence. Or something like that. Oh, look. It's Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish, stuck onto the side of a severed Lego man's head. He's had cast in glass. And he also comes with this, and I thought it was the inanimate carbon rod, but just picking it up and looking at it through the viewfinder here, it's obvious it's, well, it's painfully obvious it's just the end off a Lego lightsaber, but it's got this kind of uh, translucent stuff to it as a result, so maybe it's just a uranium rod rather than the inanimate carbon rod? Who knows? But he has a rubber head, interestingly, like Itchy and Scratchy and dis unlike all the other human characters. But I think this one works really nicely. Is it the teeth or is it this other thing I've noticed? I think it's the other thing. But again, really nicely sculpted. 
Beautiful attention to detail. Got the liver spots on the head, look, and just looks perfect from every angle. Full marks. Heartbreaking there is no Wayland Smithers to go with it, unfortunately. Instead, we got Itchy and Scratchy, which are great figures, but, you know, we'd have liked to Barney, we'd have liked to Wayland. Now, here's the thing I've just noticed. All the best ones, which would be these four, from my point of view, do share something. I thought it was something to do with showing teeth, which helps, but I'm not sure it is. It's not having the eyes wide open. Looking angry, half asleep, sort of non-round eyes, which he doesn't have anyway, and again for Nelson. I think if they haven't got the big round eyes and they're pulling a bit of an expression, it makes them look better. That is my completely unscientific opinion. And now here's the weird thing I noticed about Marge earlier, which has actually played out. Right, if you look at the figures, they've all got either, um, you know, coloured legs and coloured feet, or they've had the shoes drawn on. Specifically, let's use Lisa as an example. But Marge hasn't. Marge is inexplicably barefoot, as compared to the others. Isn't that odd? Why haven't they uh, painted the red shoes on when they have on Lisa? and Barton, Milhouse, blah, 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 blah. Very, very strange. I think what I'm going to do is not care about it, and I'm going to continue to not care until such time as I really don't give a toss. Anyway, thems be the Simpsons blind bag figures. Overall, I think they're pretty bloody excellent. Some of them are absolutely unbelievably good. Some of them are just pretty good. But yeah, Lego really never fail to um, impress with these things. So hats off to them. And if you can get the whole set without having to buy 57 million duplicates, good luck to you. I think it's worth having. Bloody Millhouse. Stop. Like, boy, boy.